Okay, hi everybody. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to our Tabula Rasa online retreat weekend. So glad to have you here with us. And yeah, we have a beautiful theme. We have uh, Trust Would Settle Every Problem Now. And uh, I know we've got a wonderful movie coming up this weekend. And uh, we've got, uh, we have uh, people from the monastery, our community from the monastery sharing this evening. And uh, yeah, to start with today, we'll have um, David uh, over there at the monastery in Utah. And we have uh, Francis here in Mexico. Uh, I'm Peter, by the way, I'm hosting this weekend. <laughs> and I'll pass it over to David and Francis now. <laughs> Thank you, Pete. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hi, Francis. Hi, David. Hi, everyone. <laughs> what a great topic. What a wonderful topic we have. This is a topic that will take us all down the rabbit hole farther than we ever even imagined possible. <laughs> Isn't it great, Francis? Uh, we, we just were talking today with all the things that seem to be happening in the world, and they're all just lessons in deepening trust yeah uh, that's the only way you can look at it yeah we we woke up this morning with huge storm in mexico last night and i was thinking are we in the middle of the night when i woke up i thought are we in the middle of a tor tornado like because it feels like the the roaring of the lightning storm and the rain and the hail and so this morning I was talking to David, just, yeah, it's so symbolic. And yet we are here kicking start our weekend in fixing our attention and focus to, this, to the Christ, to the spirit and trusting. Doesn't really matter how the perceptual world um, is changing and shifting. There is something that is steady and is worthy of our attention. Yeah. yeah, we're all familiar with those times in our life where we feel intense emotional upset. And you might just say it's just a, the unconscious mind that's being stirred up, uh, brought up into awareness. Um, one time there was a very famous uh, American mystic named Peace Pilgrim, and they asked her, uh, what? what is a mystic and what is the function of a mystic? And she said, very matter-of-factly, to stir people out of their apathy. <laughs> wow, what a mission. Imagine going around uh, and you're really stirring up an ego's hornet's nest when you really start to pray to God sincerely and say, I want happiness, I want peace, I want joy, free my mind. And then Jesus is like, thank you. I was waiting for you to ask. And then he kind of sticks the big stick down into the, the hornet's nest and uh, starts to do his work. And so Francis and I were talking today. A lot of you really don't know some of the early parables. Uh, uh, I, I say BC. For me, BC is, is before the course. <laughs> So if you knew some of the things that I went through, BC, even before I picked up A Course in Miracles, my intuitive voice was guiding me to step away from things that I should do in this world, that I ought to do, that, uh, that most people do, you know, in terms of achievements, accomplishments, uh, you know, career and family and all kinds of things. And uh I just was following my intuitive inner prompts before the course, and wow, things got really stirred up in my perceptual world just from me being intuitive and following my intuitive voice. Then things got stirred up. And I know for Francis, it was the same for you. We both have a lot of uh, things that were quite intense before the course uh, came into our perceptual dreamscape. And then also after the course came, there was a bunch too. So that's part of what we can share with you today because uh, it has not been a bed of roses. Um, but then when you really get deep into your trust, when you really let the trust in the Holy Spirit and your intuition grow really strong, then actually it is a bed of roses. <laughs> and you 
you start to forget whatever seemed to come before. It starts to fade from your mind where you're just seeing flowers and lilies and roses everywhere you look because that's what's coming from your heart. You know, you're exuding that inner love and then all of a sudden everything starts to light up. And, and we certainly have had lots and lots of that as well, including all of you showing up in our lives with such a blessing, such a grace for us to, to experience such beloved ones. And, and both Francis and I, we receive your messages. So sometimes we're just moved to tears of joy by the messages you send in, the heartfelt messages. And, and you have written in a lot of uh, messages today. You know, I've, I've just been looking through them again today. They, the list grew. And Francis, we, we have people from, what is it, 20 new people today. And I was looking at the list of countries like you. And mm -hmm. isn't that amazing? We've got some, some countries from all over. Bermuda. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, <Yeah>. Mary <laughs> from Bermuda. <laughs> And we have a lot of new people, like even from different parts of the world, Finland, Germany, South Africa, United States, United Kingdom, Brazil, Colombia, Costa Rica, Mexico, Spain. And there's just new one, new people who are joining us for the very first time. So big, big welcome to you. You know, yesterday I was reading our, um, we, we have just a, published a book called 50, 50 Years of Miracles. And yesterday I was reading part of that book. Um, I read this part where Helen Shuckman, before she the course came, she started to have a lot of mystical experiences and dreams. And uh, so she was asking for some context, like what is this all about? And an inner voice told her, um, people from all over the world are called to partake a pre-arranged celestial speed up of awakening. And then when I read that, I and I saw all your names from different parts of the world, I was like, even just a weekend is a reflection of how, you know, we're called to partake this pre-arranged, <laughs> pre-arranged celestial speed up. And the one that's guiding the ship is Jesus Christ. <laughs> he is guiding the ship and we're just partake our, like say yes to our part. That's really all that we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus tells us he was just the first to accept his part fully, to accept the atonement. And therefore, because he was the first seemingly to wake up, now he's in charge. You know how it is when you do something well in this world with your mother or your dad says, oh, you you did real good with that. Um, now I'm going to put you in charge of your brothers and sisters <laughs> since you succeeded so well. So Jesus is not any different than us. He's basically saying, I'm your equal. We're all the same one. I'm who you are, and you're who I am. And the only difference, Jesus says, between me and you is, is the belief in time. Jesus doesn't believe in time anymore. <laughs> and he's, he's in eternity. That's our eternal Christ self, which is not male or female. It's just an eternal pure being of love and light that is so holy uh, that that there's nothing of time and space that can even touch that holiness. It's so pure. It's so pristine. It's the I am presence before time appeared to be. So, um, you know, now I understand why I kept uh, opening my heart up to Jesus because uh, he was he was guiding me. And 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 helping me and and Francis and I have a lot of stories of 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 just being guided and and brought through seeming perceptual storms <laughs> like like the one they had in Mexico last night that was a perceptual howling storm i had one of those recently where it howled like that uh, in uh, cincinnati ohio and yeah the power the electricity for the city <laughs> went off in many ways and places and Last year at the monastery, the rain torrents, thunderstorms came so much that there was just 
huge gushes of water streaming onto the property from all angles and we had to uh we had to get uh all kinds of mechanisms in place just to try to handle water management because we were flooded so strongly so these are the typical things that you deal with but they are perceptual storms and that's what we want to remind you of that it's it's our fragmented perception that's the problem and happily trust is the answer to all perceptual problems trust would settle every problem now no matter what seems to be occurring in your life trust would handle the problem trust will bring you into present peace and it's it's something that we need a lot of uh, development of because uh, as some of our friends have written in I think it's all uh, Micah and uh, Amanda writing in that you know it's not so much whether you have trust or not but it's what do you put your trust in are you trusting in your past learning to guide you or are you trusting in the Holy Spirit in this moment to guide you that's really the precious thing it's not that you do have trust or you don't have trust it's not a, a quantifiable thing it's just what am I invested in and so we'll we'll share some of our lives today how we we transferred our trust our powerful mind and our trust to Jesus and the Holy Spirit and away from the ego and that's where the happiness comes in yeah yeah I mean the this path is actually really just to to for us to shift our mind so much that we stay away from habitually ego-minded to habitually spirit uh, miracle-minded spirit my uh, miracle mindedness because you know truly we we live you know in a ego habit habitually ego-minded thinking that's where i can identify you know before the course that's all that i was aware of and everything that's going on around me in my perception is really a focus in in the interpretation through the ego's lens and this this pathway jesus is guiding us to to form this habit of miracle mindedness where the shift is truly in the mind and is is not so much a problem solving um approach cuz I remember Jesus says in the course that nobody understands, no one understands his problems because if he does, the problem would cease to be. So the only nature of the problem is that it's not. And so basically we do not understand anything through the ego. And that's really, you know, we put the context here, we can't really rely on our own learning. We cannot really rely on our own thinking to try to find the freedom in our mind. And, and that's where I, you know, I feel that's that what is the foundation of this trust is really to admit, maybe in order to find the freedom consistent, consistent peace of mind i need help i need help i cannot navigate my way out and i feel like this is the promise of the course this is the promise of jesus and this is really where the peace lies to 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 give our trust over to someone who can guide us through not to ourselves and I feel, you know, I feel like this is a very different because this morning, David and I were talking about this journey is not that difficult, but it's very, very, very different. It's very, very different because our focus has to shift completely from the perception to the correction. And the correction comes from within. The correction comes from this this intuition and this correction come from yeah from a, a, a decision desire to to see it differently so it's very very different and that is what 
um, what brings the experience that can keep us going. There are many, many experiences through this kind of trust. Yeah, what, what is accepted in this world as, as commonplace, as uh, natural, uh, is basically just a belief system in specialness. This is a world of special places, special people, special events, special holidays, special gifts, <laughs> uh, special recognition, specialness that takes the form of, of fame or of wealth or of skills and abilities. And the entire cosmos of time and space is built on specialness. You might say the ego invented time and space, the whole cosmos, as a smoke screen or a, a projection screen to keep the mind asleep. You know, the ego invented time and space so to preserve itself. It's a death wish. So it invented all of time and space to hide, basically. So the ego has really got a big hiding going on. I see Lucia Young, you over there in Great Britain, you said, my biggest problem is I think I'm hiding from God. Very good. You're right on to the core. You're right on. You've only been with the course for two, two and a half years, but already you got the core message is there's a hiding going on. And what happens is when you try to hide in time and space in terms of a personality self or achievements, accomplishments, kudos, awards, achievements, all the different things, that is hiding from the light. The ego has made up a world where we think we can find glory and peace and happiness in the dust. But this world is a, is a dream of dust, basically, stardust. We're in stardust dreams here, <laughs> imagining we've separated from eternal life, and it's not going well. So what we'd like to talk about today is how, like, even before the course, Francis and I were getting these inner prompts, these intuitive prompts that actually led us to the course and led us to not just to study A Course in Miracles, but to apply and practice it in our daily lives, in our minds. We were practicing mind watching, mind training, the course calls it. And, and this has been the, the systematic unwinding from specialness. Uh, when you look out throughout history, you know, what are some of the people that light up for you when you look at all of human history? For me, I like the humble souls. I like the simple ones. I like the ones that have those sparkly eyes and that big smile on their face and that have a state of contentment and a state of inner peace. Those are the ones sometimes we call the, the, the mystics and the saints. Those are the avatars. Those are the ones that reflected in time and space that there's another way, that there's a peaceful way to live. And glory to God for all the saints and mystics. I've, I've loved reading the lives of the saints and mystics because it was all for me, all for my mind. You know, what have you got to show me? Is, if, is there a dark night of the soul? Then tell me about it. What did you go through? What did you face? What did you realize? And so part